Hello, this is Professor Jemmy Chen at Cal State Long Beach. This problem concerns with optimizing volume given that the area and the cost is constrained. We start by noting that the problem has an open box with square base. And the next piece of information that's also useful is that the cost for the site and the square bottom is actually different. So I'm going to use the red for the sites and use the green for the square base. The next thing we're going to do is draw a box that corresponds to the information given to us. Notice that we use the green for the square base. We also wanted to kind of insert information given by the problem. So we know that it's three dollars per square meter for the sites. And there are four sides to this box. We also have the cost for the square bottom, which is four dollars. The next thing we need to do is to figure out what parameters we need to have. But since the square that since the bottom is squared, we really just need one parameter for the length and the width. And we're going to denote that by x. And the height is something different. So we're going to use the parameter y for that. And go back and denote those in your figure to remind yourself. And the next thing we need to do is to actually write down the constraint from the information given in the problem. The cost, which is a function of the two variables x and the y, is obtained by writing the cost of the four sites plus the cost of the square bottom. And to write the cost for the sites, you need to take the dollar amounts per square meter times the area of each of the sites. Since if you look at the figure, all four sites are exactly the same description. It's x times y gives you the area for the site, and they're exactly the same for all four sites. And it since it is three dollars per square meter for each side, therefore we have three times, which is the dollar amount, times the area of the four sides. Similarly, we have the cost for the base, which is the dollar amount for the base times the the, the actual area of the base. That's four times x squared. And so if you actually multiply it out, you get this expression. Now the next thing we need to, kn to know is that actually the problem gives you that this is constrained to be $48. The expression we have is cost, which is a dollar amount, and that needs to be set to the dollar amount given the problem as well. Therefore, that's equal to 48. And another thing very important to know, every time you're setting up a board problem, especially a constraint or ob objective function, you need to make sure that the, the unit that you have on left-hand side of the equation has to be equal to the unit on the right-hand side of the equation. So in this case, it's dollar amount equals to dollar amount. This kind of gives you a hint that whether or not your, your constraint is correctly set up. Now, once we have this constraint equation, we're going to denote this by equation 1. And the next thing we need to do is to set up the objective function. That is the function that you're actually trying to optimize. In this case, we're trying to optimize volume, so we have to have a expression for the volume. And the volume is a, is a function of two variables here, and that's just the, base, uh, the area of the base times the height. Therefore, you get x squared times y. I'm going to call this objective function equation 2. Now, once we have the setup, the next thing we need to do is to actually solve for the correct variables. And we do this by first turning these functions of a two variables into a function of a single variable. At this moment, we don't really know how to optimize functions of two variables. So the next thing we do is to use the constraint equation, which is equation one, and solve for one of the variables in there and plug that variable back into the objective function. By doing that, everything will be written in terms of a single variable. So we start with equation one. I'm going to solve for y in that equation because it's, it's actually easier to do. So rewrite y in terms of the x. 
you move the 4x squared over to the 48 side, and then you divide it by 12x. Now we have that equation, plug it into the equation 2, the objective function. So notice that the notation changes. Before it was v of x, y, now it becomes v of x only. And then we have x squared times y, but then y is rewritten by that equation above. Simplify. Especially the second portion of it, we basically just reduce the fractions. And the next thing we do is to distribute the x squared into that. Notice that we actually cancel out the x in the first fraction. We can, we can do that because we know for sure that x is not going to be 0. And that is because x represents the side of the base. So we expect it to be non-zero. We call this equation equation 3 because that is the one we're going to try to optimize with. So the next thing we do is do the derivative test, in particular the second derivative test. And the step one of the second derivative test is to find critical number. So we find the derivative of the volume ex expression, v, and that is very straightforward, that's just 4 minus 1 third times 3x squared. Simplify that a little bit, you get 4 minus you get 4 minus the x squared. And if you set that equal to 0 and solve for x, we get x equals 2 or minus 2. Notice that we cannot have x equals negative 2 because we can't have negative length in a word problem like this. Okay, and then that is done. We have now a candidate point x equals 2 for the optimal point. We just have to verify that that actually is indeed the case. So we take the second derivative of the function and that is simply just minus 2x. We evaluate this function at x equals 2, we get negative 4, which is a negative number. A negative number corresponds to the concavity of being concave down. Concave down corresponds to the local maximum. Therefore, we indeed have a maximum volume at x equals 2. So this is pretty much the end of the problem, except that we just have to go back and find the height which is denoted by y. So you go back to equation, let's see, equation 1 is good, or you can use the purple from the left side there, there's an expression for y. So that's 48 minus 4x squared divided by 12x, where x is equal to 2. So if you plug that in, simplify it, you get 4 thirds. Remember to go back and answer your questions in the box. The length and the width are exactly the same, and that's both equal to 2, and the height is 4 thirds meters. And that concludes this problem.